My name is Ryan Burke, and I just love guitars. That's why I'm traveling the whole world to try as many as I can. You're watching the 60 Cycle Hum Roadcase. This episode is brought to you by Tour Gear Designs and their amazingly small and flat patch cables. Big ear pedals with their mysterious multi-effect, Albi. Gun Street Wiring Shop. Unlock your guitar's hidden tones with an expertly crafted custom wiring harness. And... Tysco pedals. I use them. I love them. Maybe you will too. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and I'm here at Pitbull Audio in San Diego, California, on you know the first leg of my hopefully you know long-running series of videos where I go on the road to different guitar shops and have fun playing around with guitars that I don't have at home and exploring stuff that I normally wouldn't get to play around with. Uh, I'm doing this in lieu of you know, Summer NAM and other events this year because obviously those are canceled. I'm here filming right now during you know, quarantine times. The shop is abandoned. There's only a skeleton crew here handling you know, shipping and stuff like that for their online orders. I thought it was a great time to come to a shop and just play around with stuff. So anyways, this video, I'm gonna play with three of the funkiest shaped guitars here in the shop. In one hand, I've got this Fret King. In the other hand, I have a guild, and to my left, the, uh, there is a De Angelico, De An De An I've never s tried to say it out loud before. De Angelico is maybe how you say it. So let's start with the guild. Guild came back, I want to say like two years ago. They had a display at NAMM before I was filming at NAMM. But I got to play around with them a little bit. They're funky. Guild has some funky stuff. I mean, look at that shape. What other guitar is shaped like that? I can't think of any. It's got that uh, Firebird style headstock on there. It's pretty fun. Let's strap in, see how it sounds. I'm gonna give it a fresh tune just to be safe. bat those pickups sound kind of unique they're a unique look too I wonder if those are humbuckers or some kind of single I'm gonna guess there's some kind of humbucker take off this 50 50 drive Nice and sparkly though, I like the sound of those pickups. They're like a mini bucker of some sort, I think. mellow sounding. I mean, the bridge has some spank to it, but it's still a pretty smooth sounding pickup. But that neck is very jazzy. Let's throw a little reverb and trim on there all of the uh, F-stop by Milkman.
How much is this thing? Only $4.79. <laughs> I think it plays pretty nice. The neck is, uh, you know, it's a little bit sticky in that finishing style, the painted style neck. It's not, you know, one of these hyper smooth satin necks, but it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. The front ends are completely flush with the edge. There's no bite. They feel smooth. They're not a hyper dressed fret or anything like that, but they're very comfortable. Nice action on this. I'm a little divided on the tone. I like the sound of that bridge pickup. This is a guitar I would grab as a rhythm guitar, for sure. Um, I like to have a little bit more twang at my disposal, usually, but I kind of like the sound of that thing. The neck pickup is pretty dark for me. Kind of way too dark for me. But if you like a dark neck pickup, I mean, there it is. You got it. Let's try it with some fuzz. some high gain. I'm not gonna pick favorites yet because I haven't tried the other two, but if you're looking for a funky guitar, a funky looking guitar, with kind of a meaty sounding pickup set, that's what it does. Next up is this Fret King. I don't think I've ever played a Fret King. Right. It's got this wild, like Thunderbird meets Explorer type of shape here, reverse Batwing headstock. Pretty burst on here, funky cut pit guard, even burst on the back of the neck. Only 800 bucks, two humbuckers. All these guitars have a two pneumatic stop tail combo bridges. See how it sounds. Chunkier neck than the Guild. Slightly chunkier anyways. bridge pickup on this is kind of muddy, where the neck pickup is kind of clear. Like a muddy, like through a thunky, barky sound almost out of that bridge pickup. Where 
a nice big jump of output from that neck humbucker. More high end on it. With that sparkle, I feel like this needs a different bridge pickup, is what I'm saying. If you fall in love with the look and you know the neck shape and the way it plays and the way it feels, then uh, yeah, go for it. So far, it checks out. It feels nice. I like the neck. Uh, I like the neck profile on it. It's got pretty big frets on it, kind of like a jumbo fret sort of thing. Nice fret access there. Lots of fret access. I love a bat wing headstock, even though it's reverse. I think that's fun. Yeah, the guild played nicer. I think the action was just a bit faster on it. Something about the neck felt a little bit more comfortable. Um, and it's cheaper too, by like a couple hundred. Like 300 cheaper after tax. <laughs> To get that high gain sound, I was stacking both sides of the 50-50 and the Tysco yellow overdrive thing. Let's try the Rev G2. something weird about that bridge pickup. It's got way less output than the neck, which isn't that uncommon, but... A fudge shouldn't sound immediately starved by the bridge pickup. I don't know. Jury's out on that one. Now, the D Angelico. I have never tried one of these. Whenever I see them, I think, man, those things look funky with that crazy pit guard little bloop there. Wild kind of offset shape. Oh, it says it's got coil cuts here. Why does it have two? It's only got one humbucker. I guess we'll find out what's going on there. Uh, Sean Hutchinson, the guy who works in the, uh, the repair shop here and sets up all the guitars before they get shipped out, said that these commonly show up without needing any setup at all. They, they show up playing very nicely, uh, which he didn't say about other guitars. <laughs> I'm not gonna name names, but some guitars need some help on the way out the door. All right, let's give it a fresh tune and then check it out. This company's mostly known for semi-hollow, jazz box, full hollow type things. It was a brand that was resurrected. It was a, I think it was a highly sought after small builder in the early jazz box game back in the day. And then someone took the brand name 
and started making uh, current, modern, somewhat affordable guitars with them. This one's only 700 bucks. Let's see uh, if it can dethrone the $479 Guild. I like a nice coil split because I like single coil tones. I mean, that explains it, right? Weird, this must be like a stacked humbucker or something like that. A single that looks like a humbucker. A humbucker that looks like a single because it has a functional coil split right there. It sounds like a single in both positions though. Maybe it's a coil tap. It claims it's going between humbucker and single coil. I don't hear any hum on either uh, setting. I'm gonna give it a fresh tune. Another kind of like muddy, woofy. Bridge pickup. Maybe my ears are broken today or something. I mean, in the video before this, I was playing a Strat. So maybe my ears just want to hear more bright Strat tones. getting a feeling like it needs a little bit of intonation. Kind of the B feels just a little bit out to me. Maybe I'm playing it poorly, I don't know. Anything's a possibility at this point. talk about its playability qualities. It has a smaller, more modern feeling profile to the neck. A satin finish to it. Fretwork is, is just fine. Probably the smaller version of a fret 
between these two, between these three. And it might be the same fret wire as the Guild, but to me it feels a little bit smaller, which I think I prefer mostly these days. Sometimes I like a jumbo fret, but mostly I like like a medium to smaller. Really interesting kind of blended neck heel here. I like the way the paint ends in that fun way. A gloss paint transitioning to a satin neck. Kind of fancy looking binding around the neck. <laughs> Weird head socks on these with this little metal dealy there in the middle of this like scarab beetle cutout. Weird body shape, weird pit guard shape. But if you like it, if you like this sort of like art deco theming combined with this kind of like psychedelic swirl treatment, <laughs> I'll have what you're having, I guess. <laughs> I think just because of the addition of the coil cut on the humbucker on this, uh, the tone works the best for me across all the pickups. Uh, I really like the bridge tone on the Guild. So I'm in between these two. I don't think the Fret King is doing it for me. Um, I think I'd go with the Guild at 479. I would swap out the neck pickup and yeah, it would be, a, it'd be the start of a modding journey. I think the funkiness of this body just appeals to me more than the funkiness of this guitar. It's funny that they're both kind of the same color, white with tortoise. Um, I like the headstock better on this one. Yeah, I think this is the clear winner for me, is this Guild. I really liked the way it played too. It felt very natural in my hands, where this feels not like the kind of guitar I like. Not that there's anything wrong with the way it feels, it's just not my style. There's something about the neck shape, the way it fills my hand that's not doing it for me. So it's all very subjective. None of this is an objective, like what you should or shouldn't buy. It's about what I would or wouldn't buy in this moment. And I'm sorry, D'Angelico, it's not you. It's me. And I'm gonna run away with the guild. And, uh, you know, I'll send you a Christmas card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's something about the way it fills my hand that just feels like home. Maybe I'd hit that neck finish with a little bit of steel wool, soften it up a little bit. Even the sound of that bridge pickup. I really like it. It's hard to discern whether or not it's a humbucker or a single coil, and that's fun for me. It's out of tune now. I'm gonna tune it up and I'll play out. Uh, so anyways, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Uh, click all the links down below. Uh, big thanks to Pitbull Audio for hosting me here for the day during all this quarantine nonsense uh, that we're all dealing with. Not that it's nonsense. It's important in a lot of ways. Um, but I get to hang out in an empty guitar shop that no one else is in and record guitars, which is a pretty you know, fun side effect of this whole situation. Otherwise, I wouldn't get to do this. There would be customers walking around the whole time and they'd be looking at me like, ah, this camera stuff is in the way. <laughs> so yeah, click on the links for Pitbull. Click on the links for the sponsors if I happen to wrangle any up. I'm sure I will, right? It's like Nam. These videos will get views. Sponsors want views. There's just less of them than they am. Should I do more travel content, guys? Should I go to other guitar shops? I think it's fun. I'll probably do it after the quarantine, but I think it's fun.
All right, stay grounded. Enjoy this little jam.